Welcome one, welcome all to the city of Genk in the beautiful Belgian district of Limburg on the Albert Canal. It's one of the most important industrial towns between Antwerp and Liège in the region of Flanders. Once home to the Ford Motor Company's plant, where the famous road cars such as the Mondeo, the Galaxy and the Sierra Sapphire Cosworth were built and exported for many years. From jazz festivals, all the foods of the world, to art exhibitions and the famous May celebrations full of parades and fireworks, nestling on the entrance to the Flanders National Park. You can find it all in the beautiful and picturesque city of Genk with its Celtic history, twinned with Chisin in Poland, Isparta in Turkey, and even Francistown all the way in Botswana. Karting Genk has hosted the FIA Karting World title three times and the European Championship on many more occasions. It also features a corporate karting circuit, a motocross track, and the Genk Model Car Club for radio-controlled cars. And the circuit often utilizes all four layouts at once. 1.36 kilometers in length, between eight and 13 meters in width, with 13 corners in total, seven to the right and six to the left. Here today, it's the perfect venue for the AMI Euro Series finale. Trophies are given to the top three drivers and the winning team in Mini, Junior and Senior X30. And in the Euro Series standings, the top three drivers will win a ticket to the AMI Warriors final at Portimao in October. It's a fast but technical and very exciting track, lots of overtaking opportunities. And whilst rain is common, drainage is fast and the drivers on the whole love the challenge. Mini X30 has definitely been very close all the way through the course of the campaign. And as you can see, the drivers are gearing up, ready for the start in these magnificent little carts, 110 kilograms minimum weight. And uh, it's obviously gonna be a uh, fantastic battle for all of the contenders on their Comet tires with Panther fuel. And these youngsters aged eight to 12 are battling in international competition for many cases for the very first time. In the Mini X30 final heats, it's obviously come down to Maxim Bobrashov and Dan Alaman who have got their way to the front of the field, winning both of their super heats, and that puts them on the front row of the grid. But championship leader Jesse Phillips now has 19 points advantage over Archie Lovett coming into the last race of the season with Dan Alaman pretty much out of contention for the title, but still in the hunt for an IWF ticket. It all adds up to a fabulous final here in the X30 Mini category with 13 laps of karting gank to come. We are racing in the Mini X30 final. Off we go, and it's Maxim Bobrashov alongside Dan Alaman to the first corner. Jesse Phillips slotting in a second. No problems at all for Dan Medan to come through in a third position. And a cracking start here at Karting Genk as they sweep through the first couple of corners. Into turn three, and Phillips and Medan are chasing after Maxim Bobrashov. Good start from everybody as they hold the road on the first sector. And already Jesse Phillips going with Dan Moran to go after the GGM card in front of Maxim Bobrashov as the field squirts through turn six. There's a spin in the middle, and it looks as though a couple of drivers are having to take to the grass. It's the 827 that gets held up. That is Justa Mulder already having had problems this weekend, but it's no problem at all up at the front end of the field. A light spattering of rain on the warm-up lap, not causing an issue for the moment. You can see everyone just sliding to the inside there. Is that Dan Alaman trying to make some positions? There it is. So Alaman on a recovery drive here. Two more drivers off the track. And who is that? It's the 912 that's gone off the circuit there. I believe that's Matteo Rivals. It is. It's Matteo Rivals. He's come off at the 10th corner and had to rejoin on the other side of the course. So the original pole position sitter, Mattia Ravals, his race is ruined. Now they're still just driving away here. It's down the inside. Jalase gets the move done now on Bobrajov and he is down into P4. Phillips, Phillips is lead. leading. Yeah, that's what I say. Phillips leading the way. So he got the job done. What's happened to Kanish Rao? Kanish Rao has gone right to the back of the field. Disaster for Kanish Rao, and that's going to drop him behind Dan Midon in the championship fight as well. It was Sid Delanomaker who's pulled it into the pit lane, and well, he's just devastated and completely understandable. It's the final round. Alaman trying to climb his way back up, and he could get into second in the standings with this performance. Here comes the move from Bobrashov, though. He's going to take the lead away from Jesse Phillips on lap seven of 13. No panic still for Jesse, as long as he's in front of Lovett and Alaman. It will still be job done, but he is a racer. He wants to win. He has been so consistent through the course of the year. He's been ultra Mr. Ice Cool. The last lap of the season in X30 Mini. 
And Maxim Bobrashov can give GGM the victory that they have been wanting again since the end of last year at Karting Gate. The battle for third is getting hectic. Miron, Alaman and Endicott all want it. Endicott getting into fourth place ahead of Dan Alaman. So that could potentially change hands for second in the championship. There is Endicott having his look at the 985 of Dan Medon. He wants to get onto the podium for the last race of the season and Endicott's got a fabulous chance to do it. That would be an amazing comeback for Endicott if he could get the final trophy on the podium this weekend. He is pushing hard, he's got a bit of time. Jesse Phillips isn't going to overwork himself from Maxim Bobrashov. He's going to hand it to his colleague. Bobrashov wins the race, but Jesse Phillips wins the IAMI Euro Series. They both get to win today. Bobrashov wins the race. Phillips wins the title. Amazing. Well, what can you say? Jesse Phillips, he's been waiting for that one. And he finally gets it. The championship in his hands now. He doesn't take the win. That will go to Bobrashov. Well deserved for both of them. But you can imagine how much weight has just been lifted off Jesse Phillips' shoulders here. Why have controversy when you can have two winners in one day? Bobrashov wins the final. Phillips wins the championship title in the IAMI Euro Series for Mini X30. He follows in the wheel tracks of Alejandro Melendez, Freddie Slater, Cahal Clark, Luna Flusha, and Daniel Kelleher. Now it is Jesse Phillips who takes his rightful place as Mini X30 winner in 2023. And for the fifth year in a row, it's a Fusion Motorsport driver that gets the job done in Mini X30. Maxim Bobrashov wins the race. Jesse Phillips wins the title. Dan Medon in third from Max Endicott in a brilliant fourth ahead of Bruno Priam and Dan Alleman with Oliver Warner in seventh ahead of Jarlath Sayer, Gilles Haman and Stan Fajot. In third position for Spain, Daniel Medon. In second position for the United Kingdom, Jesse Phillips. But your race winner for the United Arab Emirates, Maxim Babrashov! I'm so happy we went through all this to win. Uh, I don't have any much words, but I'm just so happy. A fantastic result and obviously finishing the season in style. On to the IWF, you must be really excited with what's coming up. Yeah, I'm very excited. Junior X30 has been monstrous right from the start of the weekend. Sasha Van Bad Bosch and Sebastian Mins came into today as race winners from yesterday, hoping that they would be starting at the sharp end of the field. But both of them have slipped to the second row as Harrison Mackey and Cahal Clark have now edged their way to the front row. Harrison Mackey with a great chance to make it two wins out of two for Fusion Motorsport in terms of trophies won here this weekend. But of course, George Gibbons Motorsport winning the final in Mini X30 means that they now need to win a race outright. Harrison Mackey, the best placed man to do so. Here we go into the tram lines. Lights go green. Here we go. Down and towards turn one. Great start from Mackey then. Had the jump. And keep oh, an eye. And oh, off goes, a spin. Off goes Sebastian Mins. It is. Sebastian Mins spins off a turn one. Oh, devastating for the VDK driver from fourth position. Sebastian Mins throws away the victory, whether that was because he spun on his own or someone assisted him to the scene of the incident. It doesn't matter. Sebastian Mins is out. And that has completely ruined his race. There is no way he can redeem himself from that. And he's stuck in the grass. Battle on the inside of Vramakis to take second position. It's all kicking off here as the battle is absolutely joined in the mid pack. Spanswick on the outside row there. You can see with his yellow helmet, he's trying to touch back in as well just right down in the field but there Ramaka's there in third place as well latching right onto the back of Bartle crucially though look at Mackie once again has driven away from the rest of the field you've got Clark on the right side of your screen he's about to disappear how does that happen look oh, means there, was, there was a tiny clip yeah that's all it took and Clark got caught up in the melee on the outside of turn two goodness me Clark is down in about 15 16th place well, where's Rocco Coronel in this one? Has he got in front? No, they're together. They're ninth and 10th out on circuit. The two championship rivals oh my who goodness. are fighting for second 
are Lida Stern in ninth and 10th place on track. And that means that if it finishes like this, Harry Bartle, who is in second, will be second in the championship. And Harrison Mackey, who leads, will be third in the championship. It has completely changed hands in just one lap. Now let's see what happens to Clark. There goes Mins, watch the red suit of Clark. Loads of drivers diving to the inside. Ramek is so authoritative on the inside and Clark losing about six or seven places on the way through turn two and three. This is the battle further down the order. This is uh, Zach Green, Nogarade and Clark and he's on his fight back. There he goes down the inside. Clark is gaining more positions here than he's losing them now. Mackey doing everything he can up front to stretch away. So that move has given Clark third in the standings. He needs to make up a few more places. He does so on the inside of Zach Green. Here comes the Renaissance for Cahal Clark and the Victory Lane Red Speed. He is absolutely marching his way back through the field as Rocco Coronel just sits there a few places back watching him go. Look at the damage to the Nassau of Harry Bartle in second place. Somebody's hopped over the top of him there. Yeah, maybe so. And uh, Rocco Coronel getting another position there, but he's just going to have to follow along there. There's Tom Kinnard who again I've been impressed with over the course of this weekend. Uh, best results so far as well but he's got Jensen Graham right in front of him. Graham not going to let Tyron pass quickly or easily and he holds a defensive line there going into turn 12. Nugarev runs slightly wide. Cathal Clark though fastest lap of the race and look how quickly he's closed in on Romeo Russell there. All he's got to do is pass his teammate and Cahal Clark is going to take over second position in the championship. Alexi Constant almost cannons into the back of Clovis Nugerade. So that was a very tricky moment for Constant. Now this is how he got the move on Clovis Nugerade. This is him sliding his way through trying to make up positions. Now he gets the move done on Green. Nicely handled by Clark and then I think the last one we're going to see could well be him on his teammate. Yes, it is. Into Cafe and passes Romeo Roussel. Lampard Bosch and Ramakers have closed in on Bartle. Bartle closed in on Mackey. We're going to have a fight here. And well, it's all going to kick off in the points into the pit lane. Retirement there. The number 84 TB Kart Racing Team, Matera Melis, who unfortunately is out of this race. Here comes Ramakers diving up the inside of Lampard Bosch. The Dutchman's not going to like that at all. So he's going to want to come straight back in on Thibaut Ramakers. And guess who that's going to benefit? Cahal Clark. So Mackey, Bartle, Ramakers, side by side still with Van der Bosch. Van der Bosch gets there. Clark is going to find the move on the inside as well. Thanks very much, Thibaut. I'm through in a P4, and now I'm going to go after the Dutchman myself. Yeah, that was well calculated there from Cahal Clark, just absolutely sending it down the inside. I think. Cal Clark right now is fully, fully focused on trying to be second in the championship standings. He's already there, but I think he could have a chance of the win. Here comes Bartle, oh. side by side with Mackey. No, you don't, says Harrison Mackey. Bartle will have to try again. He comes off the turn, tries to get a tighter radius on the run up to Cafe Corner. So Bartle still attacking. And as a result of that, Van Pert, Bosch and Clark. Bartle Whoa. on the inside. What a move from Harry Bartle. Beautiful. I don't think we've seen an overtake there for the race lead all weekend. That was fantastic. Just had the drive out of Cafe Curve and just sent it down the inside of turn 11. Now, here's the move from here's Bartle the again. Did he go off the track? Now, he does indeed. Uh, yeah, he yeah, goes all that's advantage off the track. by track limits. That's the problem, and that's why it's being investigated. As Van Van Bosch loads oh. into the back of Mackey going into turn six there. And now they go side by side. Mackey goes defensive. He squeezes it. Down the inside is Cahal Clark. He gets the move, but he runs out of track. And now he gets swamped by the pack. Here comes Romero Russell. Here comes Zach Green trying oh. to get involved. Oh. Clark's got to be careful here. He's got to be careful. He's losing positions now. Oh, my goodness. This oh, race. Rocco Coronel. That is Coronel right behind him. He taps his helmet, Cahal Clark. Come on, think. We're teammates. We can work together. But Coronel will be thinking, well, Yes, we are, but I could still beat you, Cahal. I could still take this off you. So the battle just accelerates. I mean, Bartle must be thinking that in the back of his head here as again, Romeo Russell defending from Cahal Clark and he goes through and so does Coronel go side by side with Russell oh. and the two drivers go wheel to wheel in towards turn six but Russell holds on to it but not for much longer because Coronel's got the drive out of the hairpin and goes through into that spot and he gets into P6. Yeah, Romeo Russell suddenly realising he was accidentally holding his teammate Rocco Coronel up. They have a good relationship, the Victory Lane teammates and that's Daniel Delakian. 
out of the race to join Matteo Melis and Sebastian Minz on the sidelines. Very unfortunate for the Armenian. He drops out of the race. Well, Harry Barthel, having had an amazing performance all the way through this one, he's really fought for every single inch of this racetrack. You cannot say that Harry Barthel didn't give it 10 tenths here today at Karting Genk. It's an amazing drive. It's a monstrous run. He's delighted. Harry Barthel crosses the line first here at Karting Genk. That should be enough for him to secure second in the championship with Cahal Clark coming home in fifth on the road. If nothing changes, then Barthel is the runner-up in the title fight. Excellent race. Harrison Mackey does not return the thumbs up, but Harry Barthel gets the job done. He gets it from Sasha Van Bosch. Mackey clearly still smarting over that move from Barthel, but Harry Barthel digs deep, rolls his sleeves up, and snatches the win with an authoritarian's drive. In third position for the United Kingdom, Cahal Clark. In second place, representing Belgium, Timor Ramakas. But your race winner here in Junior X30 for the Netherlands, Sasha van Bad Bosch. What a weekend. It was always going to be very difficult, but you came through after a very tough race to emerge as the winner. Just tell us your emotions at the end of this year. Yeah, just no words. Like, all weekend we were good. Like, just no words. A fantastic end to a tough second season in junior. You must be thinking about senior now, and what an opportunity that's going to be for you guys next year. Yeah, I hope going to be senior. Maybe we do junior, but we see next year. Senior X30 with 156 kilos of minimum weight on the MG yellow tires. This is where the kings and queens of the sport reside. And there have been so many worthy champions over the years in Senior X30. They have come to battle in such incredible vice. Last year, Ellie Goldstein was crowned the champion on home soil. This year, it's going to be a lot harder for a Belgian to become champion but there's definitely still a great fight. Ruben Moyer of Spain, Kalai Atkins and Sam Shaw of Great Britain and Eduardo Vila of Italy are the best placed to go for the title. And here's how it looks going into the final race of the season. Atkins leads the championship on 68 points. Ruben Moya is second on 67. Eduardo Vila and Sam Shaw are now tied in third for 52. All that hard work that Eduardo Vila had to do to catch them up, he's done it. He's now 16 off the win, as too is Sam Shaw, with Goldstein and Eichmanns matched for points in fifth. It really is coming down to the wire. We're racing at Karting Genk, and it's Goldstein versus Eichmanns to the first corner, and Goldstein's got a little way in front. He's done it. Goldstein into the lead. McLaughlin trying to come around the outside to get into second. McLaughlin leads. What a start from the Irishman. He gets past Goldstein and Eichmanns, and Finn McLaughlin leads at Karting Genk. What a sensational start from the Irishman. He's got to be careful, though, because he was off the track when he did the move. Oh, there's been big a come problems. Together. There's been a come together. A couple of the Falcons there. One of the premium cuts, I think, in the background there. That could be Louis Johnson Cool involved in that one, as well as Loris Sasha. And that's uh, Voss. It's Voss. Oh, it's Mika Voss. What a start to the race. I mean, the 2.17, it was looking so strong a weekend out of it in the final. Such a devastating end for Mika Voss, one of the stars of Senior X30 here this weekend. Absolutely came of age in the qualifying heats. That's Goli Atkins trying to shake off Sam Belota. And here comes Calteret. Belota's going to get his move on Atkins. Calteret's going to go with him. This is not good news for Goli Atkins. Eichmanns has got ahead of Goldstein into the final corner. They've swapped again, and the Belgian drivers once again going absolutely hammer to toe. And Eichmanns is likely to finish third in the championship if it stays like this. So that's why it's so important for Eichmanns to move forward. He's going to get his He's run on McLaughlin, goes. and here comes Ian Eichmanns. Takes the lead. McLaughlin will get him on the undercut. Watch for Goldstein. He's going to try and get in there to the inside of Eichmanns. Here he goes. McLaughlin leads. There is Goldstein in second. Vila tried to replicate it, but couldn't. 
as they go through turn nine and he's got Eki Kaltovin right on his rear bumper now as they go into turn 12. He's now alongside him and he gets past him through turn 12 and he gains another position, Kaltovin. This is the rivalry coming to the fore between Moya and Atkins, with Moya down to sixth and Atkins in seventh. It's going to be Moya who wins the championship, unless Atkins can take him on. And that's exactly what he's going to try to do. That's your championship rival. Goldstein is now your leader from McLaughlin and Eichmanns. So they continue to squabble away. Then it's Michel, Shaw, Alphaez, Besson, Utrecht, Saxer and Weisenberger. And that's the move from Eichmanns to get in a second past McLaughlin. Moya goes defensive, and again a change up in front, and Villa gets past McLaughlin. Villa now up into third place. McLaughlin is going to now fight back. For Moya. There it is. Atkins takes the place away from Moya, and Belota goes with him. That's going to change the lead of the championship as Moya has to come back in on counter run. Kalai Atkins has now got two places in front of Ruben Moya. Surely that is going to make Kalai Atkins the champion. They're having a, they're having a mother's meeting, Moya and counter run, as they approach the breaking zone for Cafe. Three, three wide on the straight. Vila's going to get on the inside of Goldstein. McLaughlin's going to go with him. Vila for the lead. Goes up on the curbs alongside Eichmanns. And McLaughlin will drive around them all. Goldstein going right side. Eichmanns in a second. Vila to third. Goldstein to fourth. This is the final of all finals. Now Goldstein's going to try and come back in a bit as Eichmanns just slams the door closed. Going into the carousel. Goldstein's going to get the switch back here if he can try and do it. Atkins has closed in on this as well. Goldstein to the inside of Villa and gets it done. Goldstein now up and Atkins to the outside. How close do you want to get? He goes side by side. He goes the long way round on Villa. Oh. And Belota goes through as well. Kalai Atkins with the mother of all moves at turn 10. That is the move of a man who is destined to become champion. Belota will get up the inside of him and take the place away. He knows now that he can go for this. And now Eichmanns is going to get the move on Goldstein. Goldstein livid with him because they are fighting with each other. And McLaughlin is long gone. Atkins needs to gain more. There's Goldstein down the inside of Eichmanns. Gets that move done once again as Michelle comes into this one. Boy is falling down the order as Eichmanns goes they to the next. Oh, they've done it! Oh, they've gone up together! Goldstein and Eichmanns! I told you the Belgian war was going to bubble over! And that's exactly what's happened! Eichmanns and Goldstein, the Belgian rivals, have tangled at the carousel! It's over between the two of them! That is controversy at its finest, and both Eichmanns and Goldstein are out of this final. Here's the replay, and look at this. Go Eichmanns just went to the inside, Goldstein closed the door, and, well, I've got to say, I don't know, I don't know. That is a big hit, and hopefully they are both okay. But, I mean, Goldstein furious, Eichmanns walking away from oh. the situation and Goldstein just left speechless. Well, who is that, basically? Is that Eichmann's pushing him off, or is that Goldstein taking a middle-of-the-road approach? You can see how wow. this has all got... Well, how about that? Atkins is going for the second position, and this will make him the champion! Brilliant move from Atkins! He's going into second position. If he stays there, he will be the champion! but he needs to maintain it. He needs to maintain this spot here. If he can't defend it, he may struggle as Heike Kaltovin dives to the inside there as well, gets that move done. Can he return back up? Yes, he goes on the inside of San Belota. That will give him a couple more points. If he can keep this bandwagon flowing, Ruben Moya can steal the championship back again. So this is a big one. Even if, Kat even if Atkins beats Moya, getting ahead of Kaltovin, should be enough, and he goes for it. Now, by my maths, that should be enough for Ruben Moya. Third position behind McLaughlin and Atkins should be enough on countback with the drop scores applied for Ruben Moya to become champion. We'll have to wait for confirmation. We will have to wait as they make their way round another retirement. Oh, that's Melly. Yeah, Melly Angelo into the pit lane, and that is uh, race over there. There's a lot of damage to that cut there that's come in. Who's that? It's uh, Hamza it's Al Al Fayez. Oh. oh, what an amazing weekend it has been for the young Jordanian. He has really shown his class all weekend long. For me, he was the star of Senior X30 the, here at Karting Gank as Matis Michel gets his move on the inside of Sam Belota. Atkins doesn't need to push Ruben Moyer off the road. He just needs to back him into the pack so that they can take oh. the move. Here goes Moyer, oh. diving in on Atkins, and he's got him! Ruben Moyer makes the move on Atkins. Oh, oh, he's got up! He's got up in the final turn! Ruben Moyer gets taken out at the final corner! I cannot believe it! 
Oh, and it wasn't even with his championship rival that either. That was Calteron. Oh. Calteron was making the diving move. And Ruben Moya is off the road to the final turn. He gets going, but he is down in 22nd. Carl Atkins, if he can just keep going, he's going to be champion. This has been the most breathtaking final to any championship I've ever commentated on. This is karting at its finest. Let's have a look at it. Now, Atkins defends Moya. He covers the inside line. Nothing illegal with that at all. Moya gets a beautiful move, but again, it's similar to Bartles. He dives in at the inside, makes the move. Now watch Calteron in the 2-1-6. He gets his chance. He gets a look, slices up the inside. Bang! Misses his breaking point into Moya. As Belota now thinking about the move on Eduardo Vila. And look at this, oh. another incident. Four wide at Cafe as Bo Hymans gets spat out to the grass. Somehow he gets back on the road again. And there's Ruben Meyer. Look, desperately trying to cannon his way back up the field. Finn McLaughlin will take the victory in fantastic fashion up front. Amazing result for Finn McLaughlin. Wait for it. Counterman is going to come through for second. He's happy with that. Sam Belota is going to be down the order. Kalai Atkins has done it on the main straight. He celebrates. Kalai Atkins knows that it doesn't matter anymore. By four points to Eduardo Vila and five points to Ruben Moya. Kalai Atkins has been absolutely incredible. From the back of the grids in previous years, storming his way through, the crop promotion superstar is the new IAMI Euro Series winner and Senior X30 in 2023. Can you believe the way this has played out? In third position, representing Italy, Eduardo Villa. In second position, for the Netherlands, Henke Kautenen. But your race winner for the Republic of Ireland, Finn McLaughlin. 11.3 seconds clear at the flag. That's a result sheet you're going to frame when you get home. Talk us through the emotions after such an exciting weekend. Yeah, it feels really good. It took a long time to get here, so we worked hard all week to get to this position, so it feels really good. And of course, that really sets you up for a fantastic end to the season. More great races to come, but you're going to be back now that you have established yourself as a winner in the Euro Series. Yeah, it feels good to have a win in my bag, so there's more to come in the rest of the season. The most fantastic conclusion to the most epic, epic season in the IAMI Euro Series. Oh, I'm so happy, obviously, to win the Euro Series. Obviously, it's with so much highs and lows. Uh, it's been amazing. I've just been consistent all year, and that's all I've had to do. Don't doesn't matter about if I win one race and then crash in the other. You have to be consistent. I've done that, obviously. And obviously, you can see that because I didn't have to do the last round. So then, victorious. I'm lost for words, to be honest, you know. Just can't thank everyone enough, you know. Croc Promotion, Grice, um, my mechanic Nils, my dad, my mum, everyone that supported me, um, Andrew Salis, uh, and uh, massive thanks to Henke for um, helping me out there, that was great. <laughs> three British title winners, but three fantastic finals to end the year. We get to do it all again in two months' time when the Miami Roria finals head to Portimao in October. Make sure you join us from everybody at RGMMC Group, from Anthony Jordan and myself, Jake Sanson. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in two months in Portimao. Bye for now.